42. For the first ionization energy for an N2 molecule, what molecular orbital is the electron removed from? Great question. I've always wanted to, to know the answer to this one, but today is my lucky day. Anyway, <laughs> let's get down to it. So first ionization energy for N2 molecule. Now, whenever they talk about the first ionization energy, an ionization energy is the energy needed to remove, not gain. We're always removing an electron. So that's why they go together, right? They're talking about electron being removed here and ionization energy because ionization energy is always the energy needed to get rid of one electron. And if they're calling it a first ionization energy, first means that you're removing the first electron. So a second ionization energy is the energy needed to remove the second electron. So removing first electron. Okay. So now they're talking about molecular orbitals. So we basically have to first find out what N2's configuration is, right? What N2's valence electron molecular orbital configuration is. Now, molecular configurations, which are basically the framework is down here, they're, they're reliant on valence electrons. So the first thing we have to figure out is how many valence electrons are we dealing with with nitrogen, right? N2, nitride. Well, on the periodic table, nitrogen is in group 5A or 15. It just depends on what your periodic table is classifying as that group number. But lucky number, which is the best lucky number in the world, my lucky number is five. So lucky number here is five valence electrons, but you have two nitrogens. The five is for only one nitrogen. So if you have two times the amount, you just multiply by five, right? So two times five valence electrons is a total of 10 valence electrons. All right, this is gonna come in handy when we're going to start placing our electrons into our configuration. But the next step is, is we have to figure out which one out of these two is the right one for nitrogen. This goes by your group number. Some groups will have sp orbital mixing, which produces a different configuration, but in here, we're dealing with 5A, so we have the first general configuration. So I'm just going to pop this out. So for us, we don't even have to worry about the other one, but if you want, you could pause the video to write it down if you haven't. Um, so yeah, bye-bye. But now there's a couple of things that we have to make this uh, molecular orbital configuration nitrogens. The first thing is, is we have to say what S's and what P's right? Is it 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p? This comes from nitrogen's period. So nitrogen is in group five, but if we go period wise, nitrogen is in period two. So twos all around. We're dealing with two s's and all of your p's. There's three of them, the p, x, p, y, and p, z. So two p, y, two p, z, two p, x, and then the same thing here. Now just know that we're making two bonds here, right? This denotes that we're making a sigma bond and this is the pi bonds, right? Your pi molecular orbitals and your sigma molecular orbitals. And just know that for every bonding molecular orbital, you will have an antibonding equivalent. And the antibonding is linked with a star here. But I wrote these down for you in increasing amount of energy. So this is very important because when you're gonna start adding your 10 valence electrons, you have to always add them from the start and increase in your energy. So let's try it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit here. We gotta put that 10 in and just know that for each molecular orbital, you're only allowed a max of two, um, two electrons. So. Let's drop our electrons in first and see where we're at. So we're gonna completely fill up this um, molecular orbital, two electrons. I need a total of 10, so I gotta keep going. I'm gonna drop in two more here, two, four. That's not 10, so I keep going. 
Well, what's the number that's going here? Well, these molecular orbitals are the same energy. They're at the same energy level, so they get grouped together. So two electrons are allowed here, and two electrons are allowed in the 2pz. So that's a total of four. Two, four, plus another four, that's eight. We're still not at 10, so I'm going to drop the last two in here, and that's going to make my eight. Two, four, six, plus four is 10. And technically, since these are not filled, right, these are zero, your molecular configuration stops at where your last electron is placed. So I could basically get rid of all this. All right, so now this is the valence electron molecular orbital configuration for N2. But now we want to lose, or we want to lose one electron, right? Because we're removing an electron, it's ionization energy. We want to know what molecular orbital is that electron going to be removed from. And the key here is that when you're starting to lose electrons, you go the opposite way. So when you're placing them in, you go from lowest to highest energy. But when you're getting rid of them, you start chipping away from your highest energy down to your lowest energy. So you lose your, your electron in the highest energy um, occupied orbital. Occupied means that there's actual electrons in it, right? Remember I got rid of those two that were here? It wouldn't be the last one because that wasn't occupied with electrons. So you would drop this one and this would now become a one, right? I had two electrons. I drop it down to one. I lost my first electron. And what molecular orbital was that? It was the sigma 2px orbital. And that is your final answer. So what molecular orbital is that electron removed from? The sigma 2px molecular orbital. And we are done. What do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your support and your kind comments throughout this whole journey. I'm really glad that my brother and I are, are helping you guys out in your chemistry class, also your physics and math classes. There's been a lot of comments coming in saying that, you know, they found us for one, um, they found us for one subject, but then they're so grateful that they could use us for other subjects as well. And that's the whole goal of this channel. So thank you so much. Let's keep working hard. All right. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.